Uh, my name is Henry Quinn, and this is leading a digital transformation at the speed of government. My first job out of college was being the sole programmer for the United States District Court, District of Connecticut, um, handling all of our civil criminal dockets, our HR jury teams, I was just a sole programmer working on all of our projects out of this beautiful Art Deco building. Uh, we were sitting on a mountain of data, having all this case documentation over the past like 80, 90 years. And you might be wondering, well, Henry, what did you build with all that fun data you had? And the answer is absolutely nothing. Uh, we were really backwards thinking for a while. And the only really interesting thing I built was a tool for HR to automate some stuff. And I got to go to Disney World to talk about it. But for a while, there just wasn't a lot of really innovative work going on, which is really making me want to start leaving. But I was placated with a project, uh, something that was made up um, to keep me there. It takes about an hour for our judges to get started every day and multiply it out across the entire country. It's about 15 to $20 million of time just spent trying to log into different systems. So we were working on a project to kind of collapse all that down, but there were some catches. It was written in cold fusion. Um, it had to be a static VM and we had to be in 16 courts by the end of the year. And again, it was written in cold fusion in 2017. But the bigger problem was that in order to get a court set up, it took about a week top to bottom to requisition servers, get everything installed, get everything configured. And we needed to be in 50 courts by the end of the next year and taking a week per court, that's an entire year of just doing infra work. So we started learning about containers. Uh, I started getting involved in some other judiciary teams in different parts of the country that were starting to work with containers. And I started to think this would be a really good idea to help launch us forward and be able to not have to worry about the infrastructure as much and really just spend our time working on features. But my boss was not into it at all. He didn't like a junior coming onto his team and taking his baby project and saying, we need to architect a little different. Um, we had to do things on his book that had to be static gaps, but static gaps are really hard to scale. And that's the first step of my leadership hierarchy failing me. We had someone in DC who was acting as like our handler uh, working with the administrative office. And he had a lot of ideas for what we needed to do, even though he hadn't really gotten us any amount of funding yet. But it kind of got our foot in the door and got us talking to some people at a national level. We learned quickly that it was best to kind of operate in the shadows. There are teams all over the country, all working in the shadows, not really talking about anything publicly until they have a product to present. And we learned very quickly that it's easier to go a little rogue than to color inside of the lines when you're trying to do government work. I was one of three people on the planet trying to uh, containerize Vue.js, Cold Fusion, and Informix. And this quote was really what kind of led me down this DevOps track was that my problem was how do I deploy this, not necessarily how do I build it. Um, however, we eventually made it scalable. Um, our handlers loved that. Um, we started getting money to hire on some more developers. And we even got invited to help try out a new OpenShift uh, Kubernetes cluster to see if that might be a new thing we can use judiciary wide to help deploy projects. But instead of using that money to hire more people, the hunt funding was used to just buy back time for what we were already spending. Uh, the folks in DC sounded like they were really on our side, but they couldn't really do much besides just cheer us on through this nightmare we were living in. We just didn't have time to work on features. We kind of got it eventually to a beta where we were able to scale it with Kubernetes. We could work locally no matter where we were instead of writing code on one remote server. Um, we were able to bang out the rest of the version one functionality, get it through security testing, and we're finally good to go. We went the, from that week of deployment time all the way down to 10 minutes. It's a 99.6% optimization I was not authorized to make, but we suddenly had all that time back to build out new functionality. I had to step outside of my leadership hierarchy in order to fulfill my part of the mission. But like a lot of things in government, uh, things can go toppling. Someone really high up in DC retired, someone else took their spot and just tablecloth trick, uh, everything kind of scattered. Their passion projects got put on the priority list and we got kind of sidelined. So we went from being in five courts, having a plan to be in 50 courts by the end of the next year, suddenly just fighting for resources to onboard our next three. Uh, we learned that with near unlimited resources, we can do everything right, break all the right rules and still fail. We were gonna save $15 million a year, but we had to find like a few thousand dollars in our budget just to keep moving. This is when I decided I needed to leave. I uh, flew to California, packed up all my code, uh, rented a car, drove up to Seattle. It's a really good way to clear your head. Um, takeaway though is that I taught myself to code and I got all the way to just needing a signature to save our government $15 million a year and got the rug yanked out from underneath me. And that was before I found my local and global tech groups and got involved in the community. 
Um, the only takeaway I can give from this is uh, think about what you can do if you take initiative, lead from the bottom and step outside of your leadership hierarchy when you need to, just like I did in trying to build out this project. So I wanna say thanks for having all of us here today and hope you guys enjoy the rest of the conference.